Hey guys, happy Sunday. My name is Lauren Wandell, aka The Fit Law. Uh, welcome to my Fit Law recipe of the week. Um, I think I say this every week, but I'm really excited <laughs> because this is something um, that I really, really love to cook. I am making herb crusted lamb, uh, rack of lamb to be exact. I actually have two because, you know, me and my husband, I tell you guys this every time, we like leftovers, so I make extra. And then I'm also making maple glazed carrots, okay? So two really, really easy recipes. I know they sound fancy, but they're not fancy. Uh, I, I'm all about simple cooking, um, but making it look like it took a lot more time and effort than it really did. Uh, and I think breaking it down and doing it like this is going to really teach you that getting bigger cuts of meat and doing things like rack of lamb really isn't that hard if you just know how to do it. My husband's off to the right here. He is um, answering questions. So for those of you on Facebook and Instagram, he will switch between the two. Um, if you have questions or uh, you know, want to just chat, feel free to pop them below and my husband will relay those to me, okay? Um, for those of you on Instagram, I'm sorry I cannot put text on the videos yet, so if you want the full recipe, it is on my blog, www.thefitlaw.com backslash blog. Uh, and then for those of you on Facebook, just go ahead up to the description at the top of the video and click on the link and it will take you to the entire, the full recipe, okay? So we're going to jump right into this. Lamb actually doesn't take as much time as you think. So I have two racks of lamb, okay? I'm gonna show you guys these. And these are Frenched, okay? And all that means is that, um, and I'm just gonna actually pick this up. All that means is that when they butchered it, they've gone through and they've cleaned out all of the meat and the fat in between the bones. And that's what you get these like nice little cutout bones. So these are two Frenched racks of lamb. Uh, these are about a, between a pound and a pound and a half each, okay? So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. It's split into like, nine chops. So when you cut it and you serve it, you're going to split it into chops. And I will teach you how to do that at the end. Okay. Let me rinse off my hand. Um, but first thing we're going to do is we're going to make our little herb crust. These lamb, this, this lamb recipe is ridiculously easy. Like, I mean, it's four or five ingredients. It's stupid easy. And then it's very, very quick in the oven too, because you literally just throw it in flip it once and you're done. So we're going to go ahead and uh, put this together and then we'll do our carrots while that's cooking. So a couple things you need, rosemary, fresh rosemary, garlic, dried thyme, parsley, salt, pepper, and olive oil. Really simple. I'm going to wash my hands really quick. Okay. All right. So we're going to start with Start with our rosemary and get that out of the way. So because I'm doing double, again, just keep that in mind. So my proportions, my measurements, excuse me, are going to be uh, double what you will make if you're just doing one rack. I'm making an extra one because my husband wants it for work. So I'm doing a full tablespoon of, of fresh rosemary, okay? So take it off the stem. Jennifer is asking what lamb tastes like. She's never had it before. So lamb is a gamier meat. Um, I would say it's similar to steak. It really is. It's very similar to steak. It's not as dark yeah i don't know it's really good um it's definitely a richer meat it does have a very distinct flavor but um i think if you like steak if you like fillets and stuff like that you would like lamb i think a lot of people are afraid to try it but it's delicious whenever we go out to eat um we went out to a restaurant in our uh close to us and they had lamb i think it was two years ago or whatever and my husband ordered it and a lot of times it's paired with like a cherry sauce or a cherry demi glace or something like that and it's, it's just really good. Um, because it's gamier, it goes really well with fruit um, and, like, fruit preserves. And um, you hear about lamb and, like, mint jelly, which is, you know, they make it with mint and fruit and stuff like that. So um, it's, just, it's really good. I like it a lot. I think it's a rich flavor. Uh, but if you've never had it, I would highly recommend trying it. Um, it's expensive. It's a little pricey, but it's worth it. We uh, get it at Trader Joe's. You can usually get it at your butcher, too, though. Um, they'll usually have that. Okay. So I have about a full tablespoon of rosemary, okay? We're gonna just chop this up. I want this minced. You can also do this mixture if you want in a food processor. I don't have the patience for that, so I'm not gonna get, I'm trying to make uh, the least amount of dishes possible for my husband because he just did all of the dishes. So just trying to be nice wife. Nice wife who doesn't create a lot of dishes. So I'm just gonna mince these up really quick. Move this, because I'm like running out of room here, okay. So we are doing fresh rosemary, like I said. So for one rack, it's gonna be a half a tablespoon, okay? You don't actually need a ton of rosemary. It's very fragrant and it's very, very, uh, a little bit is gonna go a long way, okay? So 
Don't feel like you need to overhaul it with rosemary. But the one thing you do want is you do want these chopped up. You want it minced because nobody wants to get an, like a big chunk of a rosemary leaf in their mouth. It just doesn't taste that good. Um, they're kind of woody. So just make sure that you run your knife through this a few times, okay? All right. Okay, I have just a bowl over here, okay? So we're gonna do like our little mixture in here and then we will get it on our lamb. So I have a full tablespoon for you. You're gonna use half, like I said, in the recipe, all of them are halved. So um, I'm not gonna worry about doing too much of that. Next, we're gonna do um, it's a quarter tablespoon of thyme. Dried thyme's fine. You can use fresh. I didn't have any, so I'm just using dried. Fourth of a tablespoon of that. Just gonna palm it. I love thyme, I use it on everything. Um, I'm gonna do all of the dry spices first and then I'll add the garlic. Half of a tablespoon of kosher salt, okay? Again, I'm just gonna palm that. And then fourth of a, te fourth of a tablespoon of black pepper. And again, I am doing double, so that's why it's so much. Okay. All right, let's do our parsley. Now, parsley is not as strong of a flavor, so you want more parsley than you did rosemary, okay? So I'm doing, um, <coughs> excuse me, hold on. Ooh. You know when you feel like a sneeze is coming on? <coughs> Ooh, excuse me, okay. All right, so parsley, we are doing a little bit more. Now, I actually want you to reserve some and keep it uh, for the end of this because we're also going to garnish our carrots with parsley, okay? So. I would do a full tablespoon at least, if not more, okay? Um, just kind of use your judgment. If you're not a huge parsley fan, you don't need to garnish the carrots with it, but it just looks really pretty. Um, and like I said, it doesn't give a ton of flavor, but it just kind of ties the whole thing together. So it's a really good, it's a really good herb to have in your house because it just like makes your dishes look a lot prettier. You know, if you need something, it's like very restaurant-y, right? To have parsley on everything. And they're just like, oh, here's some parsley. Oh, here's some parsley. They just kind of throw it on there. So um, it's a good thing to have. It does have flavor, but it's just really, really mild. Okay, so I'm thinking I'm doing about, that's gonna be about a tablespoon and a half. And this is gonna be for my carrots and for my, it'll be for my carrots and for my lamb, okay? Remember when we cut herbs, we bunch them up against the back of our knife, right? We have our knuckles in, fingers tucked under. We don't want you to lose your hand or a finger, okay? I like you with all your fingers. I'm sure your family does too. This does not need to be as rough as a trap. Like I said, it's not as woody as the rosemary. That needs to be a lot finer, so just pass your knife through this a few times, okay? All right, that is good. So I'm just gonna reserve a little bit to garnish my carrots. And then the rest of this is going in our mixture, okay? So let me get a little bowl for this. I have these little ramekins that are so perfect for just little herbs and spices. All right. And when you're storing parsley, what I do is I literally just take it out of the plastic bag that you get it in the store and I put it in water and then I cover it with a plastic bag. So I will put it back into my fridge just like this and I just stick it on the shelf and it'll last a lot longer, okay? Get that out of the way. All right, we are on to garlic. Where'd it go? I have four cloves of garlic, okay? Again, for you, you're using two, but this is for uh, both racks. So. Taking your hand, you're gonna slam the back of your knife. Please make sure it's flat so you don't cut yourself. All right, peel that off. <clears throat> How many of you on here have actually had lamb before? I know she said that she hadn't and um, but have any of you actually eaten lamb? Have you ever had it before, ever tried it? Uh, the other thing that if you, uh, excuse me, the other thing I would recommend trying too if you have never had gamey meat is venison. Um, I'm from Michigan, so we do a lot of hunting where I'm from, so venison's really big also. All right. 
Got one. Nobody else? Just one person? Y'all need to get out more. All right. Four cloves of garlic. Two. We are going to mince this, okay? If you flatten them out, it just makes it so they don't, like, get all over your board. Okay, we're going to mince this. And then I flew, flew one off anyway. I always give you guys these tips. I'm like, do this so that, you know, your garlic doesn't go everywhere. And then I'm a messy cook and it ends up on the floor anyway. Okay. We got, oh, we got quite a few. Oh, now everybody's coming in with the lamb. Yeah. Got one from Australia that eats it fairly often. A couple of people that like venison. Venison's good. We love lamb in our house. We do. We love lamb. It's funny because it's one of those more expensive cuts of meat, so you don't do it super often. But anytime we go to Trader Joe's and we see the racks of lamb, we're like, yeah, we're going to get one of those. And we always do that. I look at him and he goes, we should have lamb tonight. And I'm like, yeah, we should. We really should. And so we've tried all these different recipes. And one of the ways that I used to do it, actually, is I would put the same herb crust on it and then I would sear it. Right? I would put it in a hot pan and I would sear the crust on the outside and then bake it. And what I found out is it's actually way better and uh, way more tender and just tastes a lot better if you don't sear it. You honestly just stick it in the oven. It's so easy and it tastes delicious. We had it, when was that? It was earlier this just week, wasn't it? Like yeah, we had it like less than a week ago and we did it this way and I'm like, this is delicious and it's so dumb that it's this easy. Okay, garlic goes in, okay? Lots of garlic because garlic is life. Yes. Okay. I'm gonna rinse. All right. Now we are gonna add. I'm gonna move my cutting board out of the way here because I'm gonna show you guys how I do this. Now I am going to put olive oil in this. Not a ton. It's like half a tea tablespoon. Half a tablespoon. Bad, bad with measurements, guys, okay? And it's just to bring all of the herbs together, okay? It's not a lot. Did you see, like, how little that was? I'm going to mix it with a little brush. Okay. A little bit more olive oil. All right. I'm just looking for, like, that consistency, okay? So it's going to go on pretty thick. So I'm gonna take half of it. Now, with this, when you're doing it on a rack, you don't need to worry about the back of it. You're not, you just don't. Uh, focus on the top, okay? Don't worry about the back of it, of the rack. Just get enough on there, okay? And I'm doing this on here, but I'm actually gonna cook them in a cast iron skillet. Get that on here. All right. And then for you, when you do this, you probably will only do one rack at a time. I'm just gonna get in there with my hands a little bit. Oh, I'm so excited about this. Now, you could do this on a baking sheet if you have one too. Um, I'm not confident that mine can hold, do like well over 400 degrees. So I'm gonna do mine in a cast iron. Um, but I mean, oh my gosh, guys, just look how pretty those are. So pretty, okay. Okay, we are gonna move these into a cast iron skillet, okay? I'm debating whether I should just do it on here. You think I should? What's the difference? I guess there really isn't one. I guess I'm just gonna do it on this baking sheet. Never mind, changing my mind, guys. I don't like that my cast iron, if I had one, I would do it in there, but because I have two, I'm not confident that they're both gonna fit. So, we're just gonna stick them in here. I'm not even gonna put them on a rack. Um, now. When you are preheating your oven, it needs to be at 425. You want to do it on the top. So have the, I have my rack like two or three slots down from the top, okay? So make sure that's pretty high up there, okay? And I'm going to stick this in here. I don't know last time you used the middle one. Stop with your peanut gallery commentary, okay? I don't need your help. Um, all right, kitchen timer. You're going to put it on for 15 minutes, all right? And then what we're going to do is when the timer goes off, all we're going to do is take our oven mitt. We're going to turn that around, all right? We're just going to literally flip the tray around so that we cook it evenly on both sides, okay? All right, let us... Someone asked if you can make it in a Dutch oven. 
Yeah, I don't see why not. I mean, well, actually, I probably wouldn't because what we're doing is we really want to uh, let the air circulate around it. So when you have a higher size of a Dutch oven, it's going to kind of prevent that a little bit. So having something that's shallower edges, like a, like a pan like this, especially because lamb is not going to have the amount of juices that like a roast or like a pork, a cut of pork is going to have. So you're not going to need it to catch anything, right? Um, it's a lower... It's, it's a higher temperature for a lower amount of time. So I wouldn't put, put it in a Dutch oven unless you're doing like pieces of lamb, like a lamb leg. Um, for rack, I would not. I would not advise that. Okay, we are moving on to carrots. And I actually am making potatoes. Wrong burner. Move this over here. I'm making mashed potatoes to go along with this too. Um, because they're good. So I have these, uh, what are they? Le petite, right? Le petite carrots. And what these are is they're colored carrots. They're rainbow carrots. But what they've done is they've cleaned them for me. So they've trimmed off the top and they've peeled them and cut them into these like fancy little pieces, right? So they're so pretty, so pretty. Um, all I'm gonna do is stick these in a shallow pan, okay? Is that a stone baking sheet? Somebody asked if you have a stone baking sheet. I do not for this one. That was actually a metal one. I wouldn't, um, with my paper chef ones, you guys see me use these stones all the time. I do not use uh, those over 400 degrees because there's, they're just not supposed to be in an oven that's over 400 degrees because there's a, a chance that they'll crack. So I'm using metal just to be safe, okay? So these are really pretty. And if you can't find these, you can totally make them yourself. All you're going to do is uh, get larger carrots and just you know, clean them up, cut off the ends and slice them down. And then you can just cut the ends right here so that they look like that. And yes, you can, you, uh, you usually don't eat this. It's more for like aesthetically pleasing -ness. I don't know. It's aesthetically pleasing to look like this. Uh, so you don't have to worry about eating that when you eat it, you'll just cut it off, but they're pretty. So we are going to boil these. Okay. In yes. Yes. I'm using a pan. Okay. I'm not using a pot. I'm going to boil these. So I'm going to cover these in a saucepan with water and then we're going to stick these on the heat. Uh, it's going to actually boil faster because there's more surface area. We're going to boil them for about five minutes and, um, uh, cook them for a little bit. Okay. Put it on high. All right. I'm going to do a little bit of salt in the water because we're all about seasoning, right? Clean up a little bit. Get my thyme off the way. All right, so let's talk about this a little bit. So I have my parsley, I have my pepper. Don't need my oil, I'm done with that. So how are we going to do these carrots? We're going to get those up to a boil. We're going to boil them until they're about fork tender, maybe a little bit less than fork tender. I would say it's going to be about five or six minutes, okay? We're going to drain them. This is kind of one of those one pot sides or one pan sides. Uh, we're going to drain them and then... Uh, add some other stuff to them and we're going to glaze them. So for those of you who have never glazed carrots before, you use some kind of sugar. Okay. So a lot of times they use honey. I'm using maple syrup because I mean, maple glazed carrots sounds delicious. Uh, so we're going to do a little bit of butter. Yes. Butter, a little bit of maple syrup. We're going to add some cinnamon, salt, pepper, black pepper, and maple syrup is really, really good. Actually. Um, if you've ever had like maple pepper bacon, it's, oh my gosh, so good. A little bit of black pepper, a little bit of salt, and then we're gonna garnish it with the parsley at the end, okay? Um, somebody just posted, I can't read it. What you said you say? should audition for Food Network Star, they would totally watch your show. Thanks. I think so too, but you know, I'm a little full of myself sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're gonna bring this up to a boil, and like I said, I'm serving this with mashed potatoes. Um, these are real, this is a really like fancy looking meal. It's not really that fancy, I swear. I mean, you guys saw how easy it was to do the lamb. It's so simple. Uh, I, I pride myself on like taking these meals that people think are so complicated. So when you go to the restaurant, I think simple is so much better than complicated, right? It's number one, it's easier. And number two, it's less ingredients. And third, it lets anybody that has food in their house know how to cook, right? You don't really know how to, you don't really need to know how to cook to do that. That was so easy. You chopped up a couple things and you rubbed it on there and stuck it in the oven. Like, how easy is that, right? Um, Master Chef. I don't know about that. <laughs> I've watched that show a couple times and I'm not sure if I would cut it on Master Chef. Um, okay, let's see. I just jumped on. What are we making? Okay, so we have a rack of lamb in the oven. I'm just gonna, while we wait for this to boil, um, I have a rack of lamb, too, actually, that's herb crusted. We use parsley, dry thyme, 
and rosemary, a little bit of salt and black pepper, and we rub that on some rack of lamb. We stuck that in the oven, and now we're making maple gra maple glazed carrots. So we're gonna do some, a little bit of cinnamon, butter, maple syrup, and then we're gonna garnish with parsley. And then I'm serving these alongside mashed potatoes. That is not in the recipe that I'm using, just so you guys know, but you, I think everybody knows how to make mashed potatoes for the most part. Uh, pretty easy, boiled potatoes, you know, put some stuff in it, salt, pepper, all that good stuff, well bone milk. Almond milk is good too, you don't need regular milk. Come on, this is already starting to boil. And I can smell the lamb already. But I have this on a 15 minute timer. The lamb actually does not take that long. It's maybe a half an hour. Uh, so what we're gonna do is cook it for 15 minutes and flip it to the other side, right? And then uh, we'll kind of go from there. Um, and then you need to let it rest. Before you cut into your lamb, you don't want your juices to run, so you really need to let, let it rest. Yum, sounds delicious, good. Thanks, I'm glad, I'm really excited because we eat this quite a bit. We love, 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 love lamb. Okay, come on, carrots. Watch pot never boils, right? I'm, I'm totally that person that just sits there and goes like this, so. Um, all right, let's talk measurements for these a little bit. Please use good maple syrup if you have it. Uh, this is 100% pure Vermont maple syrup. We got this at my favorite store of all time, Trader Joe's. Um, but make sure it's good quality because you can find, like I'm not talking Aunt Jemima. I mean, I love her. I had her syrup when I was little on my pancakes, but it's not good quality. It's like all fake sugar, right? And this actually isn't that bad. Yeah, there's no saturated fat, no trans fat. Sugar is 53 grams. It's all, a lot of sugar. It's all natural. It's all natural though. No, you're, it's, it's okay. I know. All right, these are almost starting to boil. You shouldn't actually have to do anything to these. You just need to let them kind of sit. I'm a big believer in recipes that you can just stick in and like not touch. Those are kind of my favorite. Um, if you guys want to do questions right now, it would be a great time because I'm not really doing anything. I'm just waiting. Um, Somebody said we have some great syrup here in Canada. Yeah, send some to me, girl. <laughs> What are you making? Uh, rack of lamb and um, glazed, maple glazed carrots. Angel said they're opening a Trader Joe's by her. She's like, very excited. Yes, you need to. It's funny because everybody that follows me on Snapchat always says that. They're like, oh, I need to drive and go to a Trader Joe's. You talk about Trader Joe's all the time. And I'm like, yeah, it's because it's awesome. I didn't know anything about it. And then I was like. It's yeah, awesome. I took Brandon there for the first time and he was like, oh. You know, you walk in the door and you just can't believe how cheap everything is. And number two, how many dietary. And it's high quality. It's really good quality food. And they have a lot of food that um, fits into dietary restrictions. So for me um, and my husband, like, there's tons of gluten-free stuff. There's tons of nut-free stuff, dairy-free, um, tons of really, really good options for people that are on um, limited diets. And so for me, that was the big thing. Okay, so these are boiling. So it's actually really good timing because we're right about six minutes for our timer anyway. So as soon as that goes off, our carrots should be done and our lamb should need to flip. I don't want to have one near me. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, we didn't for a really long time. The other thing I'm waiting for is Whole Foods. Uh, when a Whole Foods comes, you will know it because I will never shut up about it. <laughs> Three hours away, so I totally can't wait. <clears throat> That's a really long drive. The other one that we used to have is on the other side of the state. What? Apparently, I got stuff on my face. I haven't heard of Trader Joe's in Canada. I don't think they have Trader Joe's in Canada. But you guys have way better. Um, quality standards when it comes to your food so I don't think you need stuff like Trader Joe's I feel like they don't let you guys eat as much crap as they do here I'm gonna get out a colander maybe if we have one there it is because I'm gonna need to drain these when they're done okay stick that in the sink unfortunately some of this is just kind of a waiting game guys So good. Oh, for those of you who are asking, by the way, in my post, yes, I did take down my fire alarms. They're all down. So if our house catches on fire, we're just like screwed. Screwed. Um, I should have my mom and dad in Florida go check one out. And if they have one where they're staying, definitely. Uh, if they have access to one, they'll love it. Right now we have a place called New Pioneer Co-op and it's wonderful. We've done some co-op stuff. Um, we did, well, kind of. We did a delivery service, an organic delivery service called Dorganics uh, that delivered to us. And we stopped doing it during the winter. Um, but during the summer, I think we're going to pick it back up again because they do really, really good produce. We have something <coughs> called the Corn Crib, which is pretty similar to what you're describing. You, That's awesome. Do your kids eat this? 
Heck no. My son is probably going to have, like... A hot dog. Hot dog for dinner. <laughs> Organic hot dog, but still hot dog. All right, guys. So this is going... we got about four minutes left, and then we're going to uh, get into this. As soon as we drain the carrots, we're going to do a couple things. We're going to add... Um, this is two tablespoons of butter. Um, this was a bag of carrots. So if you can't find the ones that are already clean and cut... Just buy a bag of carrots and clean them yourself. Like I said, chop off the top, leave a little nub of the green, and then just peel them down, okay? Two tablespoons of butter. This is organic grass-fed butter. For those of you, again, who have been to Trader Joe's, getting the Kerrygold butter is 100% organic, all-natural butter. It's awesome. Uh, two tablespoons of that, and then we're going to use two tablespoons of maple syrup, a little bit of cinnamon, salt, black pepper, and we're going to uh, get this going all together, and we're going to glaze them for about five minutes. Stop, please. Do you want to say hello? No. Mm. Okay. And the easiest way to test if these are done, which obviously they're not going to be because they still have a couple minutes, is just the fork test. You literally can just should be able to just poke them with a fork and it goes in. Come here. Why? Camera shy. Yeah, you want to help me? Come here. That's hot. Yeah, those are hot. So we don't touch the stove, right? Yeah. Why? It's like hot. It's hot, and it'll burn you, right? Oh, I don't want to touch that. I don't want to touch that pepper. No, because that's spicy. Yeah, I don't want to touch the salt. Reality of having kids, guys, this is what happens when I cook, is this one likes to, uh, you like to cook with me? Mm-hmm. You want to say hi? Hi. Hi. Why did you put that in Yeah, I know, I have two. <laughs> that's why. Right. He's, they said you're cute. I know. <laughs> <laughs> and so modest, just like a family. <clears throat> High five. Yeah. Do you want to help me or are you done? I want to help you. What do you want to do? Let's use the salt. You want to use some salt? You want to put that in the pan? Yeah. Just a little bit. Just a little bit, okay? Put it in the carrots. Good job. Ooh, yeah. Um, this is the other thing that I've been trying to do with my children is I have been trying to teach them how to cook. So our eight-year-old, I'm teaching him how to use a knife. And um, I try my best to get Theo involved as much as I can. Obviously, he's too young to use a knife. But one of the things that I'm really excited about is that when my kids get older, is they're going to be able to, to cook for themselves, right? Yeah, that's what, that one is called Evan. Yeah, that one is called Evan. The other one is called Evan. Um, but I really want to teach them how to cook for themselves because it was something that I uh, used a lot when I was living by myself is that I knew how to cook, so number one, I could budget my time and my money, and I could, I wasn't eating out all the time, so I could eat healthier, right? Can you just do No, I don't think so. Why? I'm just going to hold you, because you're going to go in about a minute and a half when my carrots are done. Okay? Okay. Uh. You can't get any taller, sorry. Comments? Um, so Mally says, Sophia uh, says hi, and she yeah. knows him. Well, who? Mally. Oh, Yeah. Oh, yeah, hi. You need your friends on here. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think? Good. Good. Theo likes his friends. Somebody asked if you've heard of Aldi. They've been talking about it yes. in Texas, but she doesn't really know. We have one really close to us. It's honestly, <clears throat> thank you. It's honestly something that I am, I've heard a lot about. I've gone there like once, but I don't actually shop there because Trader Joe's for me is the same. They have really what? good produce. Are you like my hype man? <laughs> Yeah. yeah? Um, Trader Joe's for me is the same. It's pretty much the same price, and they have a little bit um, better produce selection. Yeah, we got deals there. What else What else do they have at Trader Joe's? Little what? Carts. Little carts for Theo. Yeah, me? And the, yeah, and then what do they give you when you leave? Uh, a sucker. A sucker and some stickers? Yeah, but, I, but they didn't give me the stickers. Not, not this time. Let's yeah. check these. Not quite... Done. Not quite done. Yeah, I was white. But they're getting there. All right, why don't you get down? Can I kiss? Love you. Here, go play, and I'll and I'll call you when I need your help. Okay. okay. All right, a couple more minutes. Let's see. I think it's great what you're doing with your kids. Yeah. Honestly, they don't eat everything that we eat. That's just the reality. I get that question a lot, but um, they eat the best versions of the foods that we can get them. So, yes, my kids still eat mac and cheese. We try to get organic, but, I mean, they're kids. You know, I'm not – I push vegetables and fruit. They both eat vegetables and fruit, but it's not – they don't eat a paleo diet. They don't eat a lot of the stuff that we eat. You know, he had a grilled cheese the other day. It's just the reality. Okay, that timer means, number one, 
time to flip our lamb, okay? So all I'm going to do is take this rack out. I'm going to show you. This is halfway, okay? And then I'm going to flip this around. 15 more minutes and we're done. I'm going to let these carrots go for another minute. Turn my potatoes down. Check these, actually. All right. These are really, really close, really close. You want them to still be a little bit, just a, like not super soft because we're gonna continue to cook them. So don't worry if they're like a little bit crunchy, it's okay because we're gonna continue to cook them with the other stuff, okay? So I'm gonna give it like another 25 seconds and then I'm gonna drain these. It's one of the skills that I wish I would have picked up earlier. Well, actually I did learn how to cook when I was pretty little, but um, my mom wasn't a huge cook. She hates when I say that, but she wasn't. And um, so I'm glad that I taught myself how to cook and my grandma, you know, contributed a lot to that because when I was growing up, my mom worked full time. So me and my brother cooked for ourselves a lot. And, and I'm glad that that happened. And I want to teach my kids that too, so that when they move out and they go to college and all these things, they can, they can feed themselves, right? I'm not worried about it. I'm like one of those moms. I'm like, and I think Evan actually said that to me. He's like, he goes, I don't need to learn how to cook, Lauren. And I said, why not? And he goes, cause I'll just get a wife. And I'm like, oh <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> All right, we're gonna turn the heat off of those just for a second. Okay, drain them. They wish Facebook Live had a smell button because they think it would smell amazing. It does. <clears throat> okay, so I have drained carrots, okay? I put them back in my pan. We're gonna turn them on and I'm gonna throw the butter in first, okay? And we are just going to melt this butter down on these carrots, okay? Oh, man. Now I need two tablespoons of this maple syrup. So I'm going to wait until that butter is... I'm debating if I should use tongs or this. I'm going to use this. So get these all coated in the butter, okay? Now what we're doing when we're adding this maple syrup is we're caramelizing, okay? So anytime you add sugar and you cook it, it's going to caramelize something. So that's why honey and maple syrup is still sugar. Um, so this would be, it, it's almost like, uh, like when they make caramel, same thing, they heat up sugar, right? It's caramelizing. So we're going to caramelize these. I'm going to add two tablespoons. It's actually not that much. Hold on, baby. In a second. Oh, that smells good. Okay. Cinnamon, eighth of a teaspoon. Like a pinch. Don't want a ton. Just a little bit. This is going to give it a little bit of a spice. And some really good flavor. That's definitely too much. Do you want to help me? Yeah. Okay, come here. I can do this on the ground, but... Okay. Hold... Actually, I want, like, half of that. Yeah. Okay, hold that. Are you ready? Yeah. Don't touch it. Dump it in. All of it. Good job. All right. Thank you. Now, what do we need to do next? You want to do some pepper? Yeah, but it's spicy. It's okay. You can just hold it with your hand. Pinch it. Take a big pinch. Big one. Good job. All right. Put it in there. Oh, yeah. All right, Crystal, said she, Crystal said she ch truly learns a lot from your Sunday night shows. Yeah, They've learned, baby. her and her husband and kids have learned a lot to one. help enjoy their meals yeah. more, and thank you. You're welcome. I think it's good for cooking with the family and learning how to eat healthier together, right? Yeah, that's good. That's really good. I'm yeah. going to mix this up, okay? Back up, because it's See hot. It, come on. Yeah, it's too hot, and I don't want you around it, okay? Okay. <laughs> All right, guys. So I put a little bit of black pepper in there. It was maybe about, again, I think... I need you, hey, I need you to be quiet. Um, it was maybe about an eighth of a teaspoon, and then I put like a dash of salt in here. So again, these are small amounts. The biggest things that we're putting in here are um, the maple syrup and the butter. He wants to help me. All right, so we're almost done. Now these are gonna cook for an additional probably four minutes, okay? And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna find a really cool plate to put these on. Okay. <laughs> oh, 
Okay. We have our parsley to garnish. Put our cinnamon away. I'm going to rinse my cutting board because I'm going to knead it again for cutting the lamb, okay? Amber said she absolutely loves your videos, but asked, do you like eggplant? Do you have any good recipes that involve eggplant? I'm not a huge fan, honestly. But, yes, there are a couple that um, I really would like to try. Number one is there's a Persian dish called Kashkaram Jan that I want to learn how to replicate. It's amazing. Um, and eggplant parmesan is pretty good, too. Uh, crusted eggplant that you do almost like, you know, chicken parmesan where you fry it and put some marinara and some, like, really good burrata or mozzarella on top. Me boat of John was good. Yeah, my husband's looking at me going, okay, we need to do this. Um, no, but no. eggplant's not always my first choice when I go into produce. It's just not. I think it's kind of hard to work with, honestly. If you don't know what you're doing with eggplant, it can turn out really, really, like, mushy. Um, these look so good. Okay, let's get a plate. And cutting board. I have a damp towel underneath this, so if you have a really slippery cutting board, a uh, damp towel underneath it will keep it steady. See? No sliding. All right, let's get this done. Cut off the heat on these. I'm gonna just let them sit there for a minute. Okay. Lamb's almost done. We got about six minutes left on that. Um, now, when I am done with this plate, obviously it's not gonna be completely finished. Uh, I have these on my Instagram and on my Snapchat at the end. So if you wanna see the full plate, uh, just head over to that and you can check that out after. Um, Eggplant is, what does it say? It says egg, Amber, she's telling her to go to Pinterest to look up eggplant boats. Yeah, there's, oh, eggplant boats are really good, where you scoop <coughs> up the middle of the with stuff, those are good. That other Persian dish gave me bottom john that we used. I don't, oh yeah, I don't necessarily remember that. Are you, are you here to help? This is the hot part though. So there's going to be lots of hot pans, and so I don't want you to hurt yourself. So can you give me like two minutes, and then I'll let you do the parsley? Yeah, sure. Okay, all right, why don't you go play for a minute, and then I'll let you do the parsley at the end. You created the monster. He likes to cook with me, what can I say? Now, this recipe that I've told you about, leaving it in for 30 minutes, flipping it at 425, is going to be medium rare. If you do not want your lamb medium rare, which is how you should eat it, you need to leave it in longer. Um, if you want it rare, which is how my husband raw. actually wants raw. it, Brandon would eat it raw, uh, you actually can pull it out probably about four minutes. So I'm going to make him happy, and I'm going to pull it out early because I love my husband, and he wants it rare. So I'm actually going to pull it out a little bit earlier, okay? But mid-rare, 15-15, really easy. Flip it, right? So I'm going to give this about two minutes, and then we will go from there. So I'm going to do these carrots and show you guys how these look because they're really pretty. Tongs. And this is when the fun part comes because you get to plate these. And th this just looks really pretty. So if you can find some good rainbow carrots. What's your Snapchat? The Fit Law app, The Fit Law. It's just my The Fit Law, all one word. All right. Yes, I just, just used my mouth for that. So I have some carrots. We're just going to do a little bit of parsley on the top. Okay, I'm going to pull that lamb out. All right, I'm gonna get one of these on here and then I'm gonna let it rest for a minute. Come on. All right, look how pretty that looks. I'm getting some good commentary from this one. So it must be good, right? Um, I'm gonna cut off my potatoes too, because those are done. 
So I'm going to let this rest, but when you are ready to butcher it, I'm just going to walk you through this because it's really, really easy. You need a pair of tongs and you need a knife, okay? What you're going to do is literally just put it upright. Find in between the bones. Okay, I'm actually going to turn this so you can see it. Find the space between the bones and you're just going to cut straight down, okay? If you get any kind of resistance, just move your knife to the left or to the right a little bit, but you can just slice right in between these. Okay, guys, that's all I have for you tonight. Um, thank you so much for joining me. I really appreciate it. Like I said, if you want to see the full picture, head over to my Instagram or my Snapchat in the next half an hour, and I will have um, a full plate up for you guys to see. Uh, I really appreciate you taking time out of your Sunday night to come and hang out with me. This is an amazing recipe. Again, for those of you on uh, uh, in Instagram, sorry, I get so many social medias mixed up, Instagram, uh, head over to my blog if you want the full recipe. It's www.thefitlaw.com backslash blog. And then for those of you on Facebook, just head up to the top and click that description. This will be a live video that's up on my Facebook page uh, indefinitely, so feel free to come back and tune in for uh, to watch it again. Do you use portion control cups like with what you get on the 21 day fix so not with this recipe i would not because there's sugar and other stuff in it um but sometimes i do i kind of stopped doing that because we eat mainly a paleo diet uh aka the big cuts of lamb and like the maple syrup and stuff we try to be predominant predominantly paleo come here um so not with this recipe but yes a lot of the recipes that i use are going to be fix approved do you want to crystal said she, crystal said she'll book a flight and be here in two days will, will there be leftovers no Probably not. they'll be gone i take <laughs> he takes them to work do you want to say goodbye to everybody bye say go to the blog to see the recipe <clears throat> how long do you let it rest before you say that say go to the blog go to the blog and watch the recipe watch the recipe go to snapchat to see the picture yeah, see the pictures and snaps out. How long do you let it rest before you cut it? Five or ten minutes. Between five and ten minutes. And yeah, Angel yeah, says, it. by my reaction, it seems like it smells amazing. It absolutely does. And I've had it before, I so I know it's going to All right, say bye, guys. Thank bye. you. Say see you next week. Bye. Bye. See you next week.